In today's video, guys, we're going to talk about how to backtest your Forex strategies. So stay tuned and we'll get into it right after this. All right, guys, as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about backtesting and how to actually test your Forex strategies using historical data. Now, first of all, what is backtesting? Some people don't know exactly what that is. Basically, all backtesting is, is taking a strategy that you've come up with and testing it to see how it holds up in historical market data. So what you're going to do is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come up with some sort of strategy that you'd like to test. Today, I'm going to show you just a short and very simple moving average crossover strategy, for example. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to scroll back in your chart a good bit of data and you're going to start taking trades as if you were following your strategy. Now, it's very important that when you're backtesting that you stick to the plan very tightly because remember, we're looking at historical data and sometimes what we want to do is we want to kind of fudge the numbers or uh, make ourselves feel better by taking trades that we wouldn't have taken. So make sure the first thing you need to do is write down your strategy on a piece of paper uh, or somewhere so that you know the definite entry and exit rules to your strategy. So like I said, we're gonna talk about just a simple moving average crossover strategy to test this, uh, showing you guys how to back test. Now, very simply, all a moving average crossover uh, strategy is, is that when the blue line, which is our fast moving average of 20, crosses under or over the uh, slower moving average of 50, we're just going to uh, join the move. It's a trend following simple, simple strategy, right? Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, once you have your strategy, you're going to open up an Excel spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet or even just a piece of paper, and you're going to start recording trades. Now, you need to remember, it's very, very important that you don't uh, false falsely take trades that you wouldn't have right you want to if you're if you're trading something like support and resistance you want to start taking trades without knowing what's going to happen next right so let's say we're trading support and resistance we notice this well let's say that when when price comes back down to it if it meets our qualifications for a trade we take the trade and we record it you want to make sure that you don't uh, falsify your your results because that doesn't do you any good. You want an accurate representation of how your strategy is doing. So in this case, if we were to buy support, it would have been a losing trade and you need to make sure that you didn't uh, avoid that trade because you knew what was gonna happen in the data. So that's something that you need to definitely be careful about. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is something so hard, you couldn't you couldn't uh, mechanically lie to yourself, right? You don't wanna lie, your, lie to yourself. That's the words I was looking for. With this moving average crossover strategy, let's say that uh, when the blue line goes under, we're going to short, and when the blue line goes over, we're gonna go long. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to start just simply and sometimes very boring, uh, this is a very boring process, you're going to start taking theoretical trades to see how your strategy holds up, right? So we see that the blue line has crossed under, uh, and on the next bar, we're going to take a short. So we short here, and you can use this tool, uh, the, the crosshair, which is in the top left here. Uh, you're gonna use this crosshair tool to drag all the way to where the trade would have been closed, whatever your qualifications for tra trading or closing the trade are. Uh, so let's say roughly we made 105 pips, right? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into here and we're going to say plus 105 pips. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you have enough data, preferably even a few hundred trades recorded to see if your strategy has an edge. Remember, this is super, super important to have an edge in your trading. So one of the best ways to do that is to back test. It's kind of boring, it's kind of slow, but it's very, very necessary. So let's see, on this next one, right, we had, uh, this is the first candle to close and the moving average is over the uh, red one, the blue one is. So we're gonna take a trade right here and this was a great trade, right? We hold on to the position until it crosses under again. And sure enough, let's say right about there, we took about 217 pips. So you go back to your thing, record 217 pips. Remember this can be on a piece of paper too, doesn't really matter. You're just trying to record uh, your results of the strategy. So let's see uh, right here, Let's back up just so you can see it better. Under right here. So we took the short position here and we closed it probably for a loss, definitely for a loss. Uh, let's say right around here. Now you wanna be as close as possible to uh, 
proper entries and exits as you can. So let's say that one minus 70 pips. Now you're gonna keep doing this and you're going to add up your uh, profit and you should see over time a slowly increase uh, in trade balance, right? Because you, be you want it to be a profitable strategy. So you need to make sure that you know you get enough trades behind you to see if there really is an edge. Because remember in trading, you can't be right all the time, but you can uh, see if your strategy wins often enough, right? If you're going for $100 uh, and you're risking $100, if you win 70% of the time, you're gonna turn out all right because you keep taking that same setup and eventually the edge uh, gives you a profit. Now this is exactly what we're looking to do in backtesting. Now remember, there's a few things that you do not see in backtesting, right? You don't see broker spreads, you don't see commissions, you don't see swap rollover fees or debits or credits. You don't see those things. So there's some level of uh, inefficiency or unrealistic aspects of backtesting. But for a general concept, just to see if your trading strategy has some sort of uh, merit or it's, it's, a, it's a decent strategy, you definitely, definitely want to spend some time backtesting. Uh, like I said, it is kind of a slow process, but it's so worth doing. I've spent many, many hours backtesting my strategies. Uh, and it can really make or break uh, how you, or may help you decide whether or not you actually take a strategy live. To me, it's, uh, I'm not feeling comfortable about a strategy until I've recorded hundreds of trades to see how that strategy holds up. Now remember, one thing that I mentioned earlier in this video that is super, super important is that you don't want to uh, lie to yourself when you're backtesting, right? You have the power to see what happened. So don't tell yourself, uh, you know, I would have taken this trade because of X, Y, and Z. You need to write down beforehand X, Y, and Z on why you enter and why you exit your strategy so that there's no question and there's no room to lie to yourself because that doesn't do you any good. If you lie to yourself on your back test and you make it look like it's a perfect strategy, well, that won't really help your real uh, trading, right? So it won't actually help your ending uh, profit and loss. Now that is super important. Hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, back testing is a very, very important thing. I'll say it again and again because it can help you to find your edge. Now remember there's other things, psychological discipline, uh, risk management, all of these things are probably just as important if not more important, but back testing is a very uh, important aspect of trading. I hope this helped guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, comment down below and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.